jungle. What's up, everybody? This is the Life Journey Podcast with your host, Quentin Goss. And we got a special guest on today. We got my boy, Taiwan Jones, TJ. Hey, man, what's going on, brother? What's going on, Q? Doing well, doing well. Man, I'm glad you're able to hop on, you know, hop on the show and uh, crazy, uh, wow, like we're still, still supposed to be in LA. Like, what's good? Getting ready, what's getting ready for a game this weekend, man. For real, man. Supposed to be coming back from winning against in Seattle and we had supposed to have Dallas this week. No, we supposed to have, uh, get our rematch with and our revenge with Houston. Oh, yes. You're right. You're right. Oh, man. So, man, tell me a little bit about what well, Tell me a little bit about yourself and let the crowd, you know, everybody listening know, you know, who you are and where you're from and, you know, your history and, you know, just the game of football. And stuff. Got you. Uh, name's Tawan Jones. Um, as Q said, uh, went to, from Michigan originally, New Boston, from Michigan, played football at Michigan State University. Uh, there I played, you know, Devil Red Shirt played all four years, started three, um, uh, my final three years there. Um, then I went to, went on from there and went and played with the New York Jets for a few seasons. And, you know, uh, after that, you know, it started a little bumpy path, you know, it had workouts and everything, but nothing really stuck. So um, I, from there, you know, I kind of, you know, tried to figure out what I would do next. And I ended up starting a foundation for kids with special needs, which is where they, you know, are able to, you know, participate in. You know, like football type training or fitness training because I realized there was nothing for them to do, and uh, you know, and that that gave me a kind of sense of um, you know, just being grateful for you know everything that I had, even though at the time I really wish I was playing football, and you know, I was you know so down, uh, you know, so down on myself and just you know down at the time, you know, because I wasn't doing what I you know what loved to do and what I planned on doing since I was a kid, so. Um, I ended up, you know, like I said, starting that foundation and that really kind of gave me light, you know, just being around those kids every day. Um, it made me, you know, realize how much, you know, how much we were taking for granted and how much the little things matter to people. You know, we all, we often get so wrapped up in social media and we know what's going on in the world and ourselves that we don't really understand how other people have. So from there, I went and I, you know, I started working at a mortgage company. Um, you know, it wasn't really, you know, what I really wanted to do. And um, when a, a friend of a friend got me in there, so, you know, I was, you know, I kind of stuck around with it. But one day I just woke up and was like, you know, this isn't me. So after I got done with that, uh, you know, I said, let me keep training. You know, a football opportunity is going to come. That's when Alliance of America Football League was out. And that whole ordeal where I had to, you know, they told me they were going to sign me when the season first started. Um, then, you know, something happened. They said they're going to wait after mini camp and if somebody get hurt, I'm first on the list. And then I couldn't go anywhere else because this team had my rights. So now I'm just stuck. And they wouldn't want, they didn't want to release my rights at first. But then now I'm just stuck, you know, and I'm just trying to figure out, you know, what's next. And, you know, still trying to stay positive. And um, then I, they ended up calling me. You know, the Memphis Express team ended up giving me a call and telling me that, you know, they want to bring me in for a workout. If I, you know, did the workout, then they would sign me that day. So I went in, you know, killed the workout. This is what I've been training for for years, um, you know, ready for this next opportunity. And that Tuesday, they shut the league down. So I went, I, like I said, I went in Monday, did the workout, killed it, signed my contract Monday, Tuesday before noon, the league was shut down. So, you know, it was kind of tough, um, you know, coming back from that. Cause, you know, I thought that was my next break. And, you know, I knew the XFL was gonna come out for another year. I knew the NFL wasn't really an option because I hadn't played in a few years. So then I ended up going to the showcase with the XFL, trying to stay positive, got invited to that. And then I, uh, from there, um, you know, waited for the draft, got invited to the draft. And then the first day of draft, the other draft came and I didn't get called. So I'm like, man, I don't even know you know I, what I'm gonna do next. I don't. You know I, I thought this was it for me. Then the second day happened, and the LA Wildcats called me. So I'm really fortunate about that. And um, yeah, now we're here. Um, you know, play. You know, we played the season, went through mini camp, training camp, grinded it out uh, halfway through the season, and then we had this you know whole uh, pandemic going on right now with the coronavirus. So that cut our season short. So I mean, it's kind of a, kind of the same feeling. Like you know, kind of hurt that I wasn't able just to finish the season and you know, really showcase all that I can do. But at the same time, um, you know, our safety is more important. And, you know, it wasn't just like the league and shut down. Like it's everybody's following suit. So 
Um, and I'm pretty sure and pretty positive that the league will be around for years. So I'm really excited about that. For sure, man. Well, is it, I heard some guys talking that they, you know, they would sign a waiver, like that Seattle game, they would have signed a waiver to play. Is, would you have yeah. signed a waiver? Yeah, definitely. I would have. I would have signed a waiver, man. I would have took my chances, and you know, um, you know, being able to play the game I love, and you know, uh, just from hearing, you know, everything about the virus. I know it's serious and everything, but I feel like you know us being young and healthy, and you know, if we, you know, if we ended up getting the virus, and you know, just took the right precautions, I feel like we would have been okay. But you know, at that time when we first, when they were first talking, when they shut the league down, we didn't think that it was that big. But as you see now, you know, a lot of cases are being. Um, being confirmed, especially with, you know, high profile people and uh, players. So, um, I mean, as of right now, I still would play, you know, <laughs> of course, it would, have been the only, it would have been the only show on TV and uh, could have been, you know, just continue doing what I was doing. So um, I would have, yeah, I would have definitely just you know, went out there and suited up. I feel you, I feel you, man. I was feeling the same way. Like, you know, at the end of the day, it's a game that we love. <laughs> yeah. You know, go out there and just play. But, um, yeah, yeah, man. So, tell me, what's your favorite restaurant out in there in the Michigan? Favorite restaurant in Michigan? Whoa, it depends on the depends on the um, the category. So, if we go if we are we, if we're talking, you know, like soul food type type of type of deal. I'm gonna have to go with it's called La Culture. It just opened up at downtown Detroit. If you're ever in Michigan, okay. please try that out. One of the best restaurants that's open. Um, uh, Mexican, I'm gonna have to go with Diego's Mexican Mexican food, the best tacos. Uh, I, when I before I went out to LA, I, I'm usually at Diego's at least twice a week. <laughs> so Diego's is there, like for barbecue, Bad Brass barbecue. A lot of people in Michigan and know about it. Uh, pretty good and pizza wise, just pizza. Okay, wow, you got a couple spots up there. Right? Yeah, I, hey man, I told you I'm a foodie. I'm on Yelp more than I'm on, <laughs> He's on Yelp on Twitter. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Okay, what's uh? So tell me, what's like some of your favorite hobbies uh, aside from football? What's some things uh, that other like, people know? Like, what do you like to do outside of football? Right? So, oh, like, yep, like I just said, like the foodie thing. Like, I'm always on Yelp trying to find different restaurants to try. Like, I hit up my boys or you know or somebody and like, hey, let's go try this restaurant and you know just try to like you know just I try to experience different types of you know uh, foods and everything. So I like that. But uh, on top of that, boxing is boxing like my top one. Like, if I didn't. If I to get drafted into, you know, the Los Angeles Wildcats, and y'all probably, you know, I would have been starting my boxing career by now, mm. uh, you know, with all this going on, and um, you know, just that uh, watching, you know, different movies and shows on Netflix, which is, you know, great for me right now, but we have nothing but time right now to do that. Really. <laughs> um, and uh, yeah, that's. I mean, that's pretty the main one. And, you know, just hanging out with family, friends, and loved ones. You know, just um, you know, trying to you know keep that same uh, was the same you know the same um, togetherness with uh, you know everybody you love. Right. And how how is that bond? You know, you think it's just like yeah, it's like a serious epidemic and stuff with this virus and mm -hmm. the pandemic with the virus and all that. But at the same time, what would you say about like yeah, people people being together with their families and spending time with each other? You know that I you think, think that's important. super important. Yeah, I think it's very important. I think with this, uh, with everything that's going on right now, I think it's forcing everybody to take a step back and realize what's important. Because right now, money's not important. You're not buying anything. You're not going out buying anything. You're not, I mean, you can order something, but there's no, you don't know when you're going to get it because we don't know the people that you're ordering from are working, you know? So, um, you know, it's just, it, it's just, uh, you know, that, um, you know, making people like realize what they have and, you know, not taking anything for granted realizing what life is just with you know if you're not able to walk outside or if you're scared to go outside like a lot of people are um you know it's just i mean it's it's just uh like i said it's it's crazy that all this is going on but it makes you really just think about you know what's really important hmm. and what, what to you what's the most important uh, most important is being around, you know, a loved one, you know, family, you know, um, just, you know, being here with him. Like I could have, like I, right now I'm at my parents' house right now. I could have went, you know, back to my house and, you know, you know, just hung out and chilled out there. But, you know, I feel like, you know, right now, you know, after I was out in LA for, you know, or I wasn't even home for, you know, this whole year up until what, a couple of days ago, um, you know, just being with them and, you know, being able to, to see them and talk to them, uh, eating dinner with them, watching movies, just being able to talk, not even even having to be in the same room, just knowing I'm under the same roof as them, as them um, you know, that really means a lot to me. 
Um, so like I said, especially all this going on, that's what's important to me. Um, right. So I'm gonna, you know, try to, you know, stick it out as long as I can and just, you know, uh, enjoy my family. That's the most important. I, I feel that. I feel you on that, brother. Same here Definitely. with the fan bam. Uh, spending oh, yeah. time with them breaking bread. I feel Got to. I have to. Got to, man. Now, they say, mo you know, let's keep it real. Most guys that play football, when stuff like this happens, like some guys go crazy. Some guys, like, don't know how to handle it. How do you handle a situation like this? You've been in, you've been in a situation, you know, it wasn't a pandemic, obviously, but, like, you've been, like, you know, when football has stopped for you, like, you weren't playing. Mm -hmm. Like, how do you handle a situation like this? Talk to the people that, like, aren't they lost their jobs now or people are getting fired now from work they don't know how to handle being out out of work and how to keep their mental strong how do you keep your mental strong in a situation um well i mean you gotta you have to take you have to take your time and you know deal with it like every, everybody's different so like for me um you know the first time i got cut from uh new york and um you know i kind of felt like a, a mild depression you know because that's what i you know me uh as, as well as you like we, we grew up watching football and like that's what i want to do like i want to do that i want to like yeah i have other stuff on the side but if it's not that then you know i won't be as happy as i am so you know being in that position and being able to finally get to that next level and you know doing what you said you want to do growing up and then all of a sudden that's just taken away from you it, it kind of hurts so uh for me that the depression kind of kind of kicked in you know start feeling sorry for myself um and uh, um like mostly for anybody who's going through anything, it doesn't have to be football, like you said, like losing a job or, you know, something that's just, you know, they, they, that they lost, lost the business, something. Like I would say just, you know, take, you know, take your time uh, to heal. Don't let nobody just tell you that, hey, it's just this or it's just football or just a job. It's something else, you know, uh, something else to come. Like, yeah, something else will come, but don't let, you know, let me heal, heal with what's going on now. Like don't, like for me, I didn't, I didn't let it heal. Like I just kept, you know, um, kept feeling sorry for myself over and over. Um, you know, people kept telling me, oh, you can do this, you can do that. And I'm telling them, like, I don't want to do that. Um, you know, just, I, I just kind of, I don't I, I don't know the words. I just, it, it just, it was just too, too much for me to grasp that I would have to go do something else than what I love doing. So with that being said, um, just, you know, and sit back and just, you know, take it all in. Like, if you started the business or you failed at it, okay. You start, you fail the business, take your time, recoup. Um, once you, you know, get back together, once you get yourself back together, you know, find out what's next, find out how you can open up another business and then open up another business from there. And like everything, like you're supposed to fail in life. And that's what people don't realize that everything, like just cause you see somebody else doing it, doesn't mean it's gonna happen that easy for you. Mm. Like you're supposed to fail. At some point you're gonna fail in life and people were afraid of failing and, but that's how you, you know that's how you handle adversity and that's how you become stronger as a person and that's just what people you know have to realize they have to deal with and i promise you you'll be okay yo great yo true words from uh taiwan jones man no man that's that's real talk right there a lot of people are like it's so it's a social media age i think that's what's really hurting a lot of us is like that's what it is. you definitely go online you go ahead go ahead yeah, every, everything's online and everybody's comparing themselves to each other which is mm. the bad thing like i caught myself doing it like i'm comparing myself to friends who are in the league you know like when i got cut like and i know i should be in the league too like we played together like or just people that you see like man i, I know i can say oh i know i'm better than this person i know i'm better than them i know i work harder than them. like you can do that all you want, but at the same time, if it's not for you at that moment, then it's not for you. You have to, you know, you got to understand that. And like we said, like we always talk about handling adversity. That's one of the biggest things. Like, you know, you're supposed to fail, but you failing is going to make you even stronger. It's so true. It's so true. No, great words, brother. Um, last two questions. So this one's kind of a deep one. I know like when I ask it to a lot of people, they get kind of stuck on it. Mm -hmm. What's your life purpose? What is my your life purpose? Why did God put you on? Uh, he put me on earth to, um, to pretty much, you know, give back to the people. Like I said, when I started my special needs foundation, which is even now, like I partner up with a lady in Michigan who has the one who has the largest, um, who has the largest, uh, the largest special needs uh, foundation in the in the well in the Midwest. Um, so me and her work together. She's a Michigan State alumni. Um, you know, we put stuff together for like, I run a summer camp for football and then fall fitness camp, you know, just to keep the kids active and just seeing the looks on their faces, like I was saying earlier, like it's, it's so, like we don't understand how much of an impact we have on people and them, like they, they, like they're not trying to go to the next level. 
at all. They're not trying to go to college to play the sport. They're not trying to go to the NFL and play a sport. They're not trying to, they're not trying to, you know, go anywhere past just having fun. And when you realize that they have more fun just being around you and you see the reactions on the parents' face when the parents are crying because they haven't seen their child as happy as that, that's what really gives me joy. And, you know, just being that, you know, being that um the person in somebody's life who can, you know, bring joy to them um, and just try to, you know, help them help their lives be a lot, a lot smoother. I think that's my purpose. Wow, that's a powerful purpose. That is a powerful purpose. Make sure everybody, you know, y'all y'all think about your purpose, whoever listening right now. Think about why did God put you on this earth? Why what's like what do you need to do? Like why are you here? Are you here to help others? Are you here to like build things? Like whatever your purpose is, make sure you think of yeah. it. I feel like if I want like wasted purpose, it's like you die and then like God looks at you and is like, Look, like, you, you kinda like you wasted your time on earth. Like you didn't really do what you were supposed to do. So like that's kind of like a wasted purpose. Like somebody just going through life, yeah. not really trying to like, at least seek it. You know what I'm saying? At least try, and it's hard, that's hard. It's, it's not an easy thing. But um, yeah. yeah, so okay, last thing to finish off. What is something you could tell people who are listening right now that want to be a football player, want to like uh, create their own foundation? How do they get like you? How do they get to where you are? And how do they, where do they start? Um, I would say uh, pretty much being disciplined. Uh, like like you said, so much going on in today's world. Like way more than when me and you were kids and playing football. When we were younger playing football, and it, like like life was just super simple. Now you know it's so much like social media. There's all these games going on. Like my nephew, he, you know he's you know, he's nine, and you know at nine I wasn't you know I, I didn't even get a PlayStation until I was like twelve. So you know I wasn't like playing video games. But now they got the cell phone, got the iPads. Mm-hmm. You know, everything, everything is, you know, it, like it's, it's okay to have fun and everything like that, but the most part for anybody is to be outside and be active um, because it's hard to, um, it's hard to like to get these years back, you know, um, like at this age, that you know, my nephew's age, I was already learning how to play football. Like I already knew, you know, I already knew the rules. Like I was enjoying it, having fun. Um, so I would say like, you know, try taking it, you know, not taking it, I'll say take it serious, but not too serious, depending on like your age. Like high school, have fun with it. Don't harp on it too much. Like I need to go to college, I need to get to college. If you're meant to go to college, it's gonna happen. If you put in the work, it's gonna happen. But you can't say you're gonna put in the work and then you're, you know, you're doing things that are, you know, hurting your dream. Like whether, you know, I, I see a lot of high school kids now smoking and drinking. Like, um, you know, that's that all that's gonna do is hurt you. Listening to your parents. Um, like sometimes I give my parents, you know, a hope like when I was younger, I guess we all do, you know, somebody, our parents tell us something, we don't really listen to it, but somebody else tells us the same exact thing that our parents said, and now we want to listen to it. So, right. I mean, I was, <laughs> you know, that's, I mean, that, that's just how we are. So like, I would say, you know, but I still, at the end of the day, listen to my parents and, you know, understand, you know, everything they, you know, they did for me. So if you want to get to that stage, just listen to whoever, who, whoever's trying to help you. A lot of people are trying to help you uh, and not trying to hurt you. So uh, just listen to them, you know, keep grinding, uh, you know, and just, you know, study your sport. Study what position you want to be. If you see somebody, you have an idol, study study them and, you know, watch them at least three times a week and just I guarantee you'll start picking up on some of the habits that they do and then you'll start making some of them your own. Real talk, real talk from TJ, man. I appreciate you, brother. Hey, anything else right, you want to do with? Oh yeah, uh, you were like a yeah, quote or something, some type of quote. Like, you, know. you said a self quote. Yeah, some type of quote that can they can live, uh, live the rest of them lives. Um, let me see a self quote. Let's see what I got. Uh, okay, okay. My one of my like my biggest quotes is like because a lot of times, as me and you talked about before, a few like. If something's not going our way, we're quick to blame somebody else. Like somebody's the enemy. Like somebody, somebody doesn't want me to be great. Like they won't let me play because they don't like me. Like, at the, but at the end of the day, you have to look in the mirror yourself and you know realize, well, okay, what am I doing? Right. Am I giving? If I am I giving everything that I have, you know, to to um to be the, to be the best to like not leave a discussion to why they're not playing me to get to leave discussion as to why I'm not getting a job. Uh, you know, different different things like that. It's not just football, it's just, you know, in life. 
So uh, like, that's the biggest thing. So one of my biggest quotes was the biggest enemy, my biggest enemy is my inner me. Mm. So that's, that's, that, that's just something I, I love and I like to live by because I have, you don't, you don't, you don't have any enemies. You can try to make enemies all you want, but the only enemy you have is your enemy. That's the only person that, you know, who's going to make you feel any, any type of way or make you think that, you know, you're not doing enough. Um, and that's, that's just, you know, that's my, my, my biggest quote. And I, I live by that to this day. Might get a tattoo on me. Real talk, real talk, man. Uh, everybody make sure y'all listen to that. Cause yeah, it's, it's so easy to play the blame game, man. It's easy, especially, especially nowadays. Oh yeah, oh yeah, yeah man. So, no, I appreciate you coming on the show, bro. I know it's like a lot of madness going on right now, but hey, you know it's good to have you on and be able to just talk some real. You know, this this whole show, this whole podcast, is just to talk real life. Like it's called the Life Journey Series for a reason. Mm-hmm. What's going on in your life? And what's like? How are you? You know, making do and what? You know, where are you looking to go? So, right. uh, oh yeah, let me actually. Yeah, where are you looking to go? Like. You know, after all this Corona stuff is done and all that, like, where, what's your like ultimate goal and stuff like that? Like, you mean like after, like in life or just like after this? I guess after, after after life. Yeah, well, I mean it's after life. <laughs> uh, yeah, after um, football is done and stuff. Like, what's your ultimate goal and stuff? Um, my, my ultimate goal is to, uh, of course, keep the foundation uh, with the, with the kids going, but also, you know, just try to like try to do like I'm mean, going to earth one so I'm gonna try to do as much as I can like I said I like boxing so if I get into boxing and I you know good enough to you know be on tv and box and have you know my my family watching and of course I'm gonna do that uh which we talked about Q uh modeling uh I've been in a few commercials so you know just doing doing stuff like that but like doing it consistently right not 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 like having a commercial here or doing my little gig here and then not hearing nothing for three more months and or no, another year and just trying to keep chasing the beer and like have something consistent like have these you know people want to call me to keep doing the model and to keep doing this or be a spokesperson for this so right. that's you know, my, that's my main thing is to have you know to do that i like being in front of people talking um you know like being on the screen like being in front of a camera i mean that's we play football so that's what we you know that's that's what we that's what we did like our, mis- our mistakes are there for everybody to watch so why not show people the good, you know, what, what else we can do. You know what I'm saying? Real talk, real talk. Hey, appreciate yeah. you. Um, hey, man, we'll keep this thing going. You know, we'll definitely yeah. have you back on. And uh, yeah. I appreciate you. Thank you, Doc. No problem, man. Everybody stay safe out there, too. Wash your hands. <laughs>